Okay, part eight here is about the motivation for polymorphism. We've already had two previous parts talk about polymorphism, and so hopefully this one can fill in some gaps about how it might actually be useful sometimes. So again, the learning goal here is just what we've seen before, which is when we call a method on an object, we look in the objects class to find the code for the method. Okay, I have example eight here with the main method inside of it, and it's got a bunch of lines of code, but I actually want you to focus on that first line of code, cat array, many cats gets a new cat array of length four. And I want you to draw a picture of what memory would look like after the first line of the main method. So you should pause here and I'll keep going. Okay, before we look at a picture of this, I want to talk you through some of the pieces. So that first line cat array many cats that creates a variable of type cat array. And then it's going to reference a four element array that could hold essentially four references to cat objects. None of those have been set yet, so all of the array elements will contain null. And we looked at null in part one. Okay, then we see that we're setting the value at many cats at index zero, one, two, and three. And then on the right hand side, you can see that we're setting it to a new cat, a new tiger, a new cartoon tiger, and a new cat again. Then at the bottom, we're looping through the array. So it's gonna go through the many cats array one by one, and it'll make a copy of whatever reference is in there and refer to it with C, and then it'll call the say hello method on it. Okay, let's look at a picture of this. So again, we have the, uh, the cat array many cats. It's referencing a new cat array with length four. And remember, at this line of code, we wouldn't have any of those remote controls yet. They would all just be null. But you can see they're each of type cat. Then you can see that we set those array elements to a new cat, a new tiger, a new cartoon tiger, and a new cat. Then when we loop through those arrays, we're gonna call say hello on each of those objects. And you might remember from the cat, tiger, and cartoon tiger, code that the cat will say purr, the tiger will say roar, the cartoon tiger will say hoo 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 hoo, and the cat will say purr. And that variable C that we were using to call say hello, that variable was of type cat. But remember when we call a method on an object, like when we call it on a cat or a tiger or a cartoon tiger, we look in that object's class for the method and each of them had their own say hello method. So even though we were using a variable of the parent type of cat, they still all had their own way to execute this method. And so it provides this opportunity to have a bunch of different types of things all within an array. Before this, we haven't been able to put different types of things in an array. We might have had a string array, and so everything in there's gotta be a string. Or an int array, everything in there's an int. But here we have the new flexibility with inheritance that we can put objects of the class or subclass within this array. So that provides the advantage of being able to sort of treat them all the same, but then still their behavior is dictated by the code provided within their classes. Again, polymorphism is just having one way to interact with objects of multiple types. That's what we saw here. And it relied on this earlier learning goal we had, which is when we call a method on an object, we look in the objects class to find the code for that method.